Hey everybody, my name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. And on this Camper Report Show, we've got a great couple to interview. They are RVers, they're on, they've been RVing for 40 years and they are vendors at some of the largest antique markets in the world. And they take their RV with them and live in it right next to the booth. It's a really cool story. That's fantastic. And I've got uh, a good friend, Janine Pettit, founder of Girl Camper, coming back. We haven't had her on for over a year, and it's been an amazing year for them, growing their membership, increasing the magazine, toying around with a couple of other ideas. So it'll be good to, good catch up with Janine. It'll be a great show. Stay with us, everybody. We've got that, plus all the news of the week, courtesy of where, Bob? RV Business and Woodhouse Campground Magazine. Okay, so stay with us, but make sure you like us too, right down at the bottom. We'll be back with more right after this. And welcome back to the Camper Report Show. My name is John DePietro. I'm here with Bob Zagami. And Bob, it's hard to believe that the start of the camping season is right around the corner. And there are a lot of very differing opinions as to whether there'll be more people camping or less people camping. There's so many variables on the table. What's your take? Well, it, it certainly has come quickly, uh, but it is anticipated greatly with everybody wanting to get out and celebrate. And, you know, it's kind of like the unofficial, for those that don't have 12 month camping, it's kind of the unofficial start to the camping season. So we're very optimistic in terms of the number of people that are going to be heading out to the campgrounds. It's, you know, they're going to be challenged in terms of getting the reservations. You're certainly not going to wake up Friday morning and say, let's go camping and uh, try to find a campground. Mm. So AAA says there'll be an 8.3% increase in travelers. That means everybody, whether it's by by, uh, airplane or by train or by private car or whatever, but all of the... um, early reports from the campgrounds and the campground industry is that, like you said, I mean, this is going to be a banner year. Now, that was prior. All those statistics were done prior to this gas issue. Um, What what are you hearing? Are you hearing people canceling? Are you hearing people saying, I'm going ahead with it no matter what? I'm actually hearing more people say they're going ahead with it than canceling. And one of the reasons, and it came up in the, uh, there's an industry event called the RV Power Breakfast that was held last week. And one of the panel discussions was about where where are we right now as we kind of head into Memorial Day weekend. And the feeling is that RVs now and the RV lifestyle are totally mainstream. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case prior to COVID. You're absolutely right. You knew or your family knew but everybody didn't know. And what they say is now when the family sits down this year to talk about a weekend vacation or a two week trip to Disney or flying wherever they wanna go flying in the country, they're gonna talk about airplanes and they're gonna agree. They don't want anything, they don't wanna go anywhere near an airport. The cruise ships are coming back, but not at the levels they anticipated. I spoke to somebody last week that went on a cruise and the ratio between the crew and the passengers was seven to one. There were seven crew members for every single passenger. And yes, they got great, great service. Yeah. But how do you yeah. run the ship like that? But then they're going to talk about RVs. Why? Because everybody's talking about RVs. Every magazine has an RV in it. TV, you see Ford with their lightning truck with you know an RV behind it. I'm just going to say that I'm, I'm seeing um, auto manufacturers, pickup truck ads, instead of just a pickup truck going over a field or through the Grand Canyon, Canyon, they're towing a travel trailer or an, in many cases, an Airstream. And, but, and this uh, is what's going to grow. These are, these are the growth patterns of the RV industry, let's say for the next five years. Because it's mainstream and because people are going to be talking about it, those are people who have never tried it. And we know statistically, the last two years, 50% of our buyers were new buyers, new to the the industry. That's going to continue. You cannot be that mainstream and have that many discussions and see it on television, in movies, and what have you, without growing it. So we are going to grow despite the economic challenges that we see right now. And despite the fact that the news media is doing everything everything it can 
to talk about high fuel prices, record high. You know, every every time you turn it on, and, it, and it's not whether it's the Democrat station or the Republican station. It's it's you know, of course there's no such thing as mainstream media anymore anyway. But that's the well, topic you know, of another funny, sermon. funny story. I was I was at a gas pump this morning, out on one twenty eight, and uh, there was a film crew there from Channel Five, yeah. and they were going gas pump to gas pump and talking to people, you know, what their impressions were. And then he came to me and I said, you, you can't show what I would tell you. So you may as well go to the next pump. He says, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, they're just looking to dig but up I'm trying to do it. Neg- yeah. All the negative aspects of it, but you know what? And there is an element of people out there right now that are saying, you know, especially the people that are over 50, they say, you know what? I don't know whether I should put it off till next year. Number one, who knows what you're going to be gas wise next year? Who knows what you're going to be health wise next year? Who knows what you're going to be like financially next year? And there people are saying, I'm going anyway, which is similar to what people said when I interviewed them at the Boston RV show back when it was snowy and cold and icy and crazy out in January. Right. So, In in um, fact, I, one could argue that you need it this year more than ever. Yep. There's You're tumultuous right. times. And yes, there are a lot of challenges, but you cannot sit back and let somebody talk you into doing something you don't want to do. Yep, exactly right. And the other thing is this. Um, there are people that are saying, my vacation is my relaxation. It, it takes me away from that craziness. And yep. um, you know, with that being said, um, oh, I know what I was thinking. We need to tell our viewers that are that are reading these stories about crowded campgrounds, etc. There may be last minute cancellations. So if you want to go somewhere, don't think, oh, it's filled up. Don't just rely on the website. Call the campground on the day of or day before that you want to camp there and say to them, like I have done on numerous occasions, please don't laugh at me, but is there any chance that you've had any cancellations that you can, you can deal with one family with a, um, you know, a 30 foot travel trailer and um, two dogs and two kids. Every time I did that last year, of course, I didn't have two dogs and two kids with me, but we got in, we got in. So you know what? It, still, it still works. You know, it worked 20, 30 years ago. I remember on a Memorial Day weekend one time when we had a travel trailer that we said uh, we called up a place up here in Maine. And lo and behold, we called on Friday morning and we were camping Friday afternoon. And it was a phenomenal campground, small on the salt marsh up here in Scarborough. And it was phenomenal. And, and we frequented that campground many, many times over the years before we uh, took a seasonal with a park model. Yeah. yeah. And you know, when you look at that picture behind you with the, uh, with the campfire the, around the campfire, there's nothing. I don't care what you do for work or where you come from or how much money you have or how much money you owe. There's magic in that campfire. And we want to tell people, hey, go RVing. Well, and, and, and you're so right. It, the, when you think about where society is today, where the country is today, do you want to sit home And listen to all the people tell you the sky is falling. Or do you want to go like the picture behind me, have a couple of adult beverages with your friends? Watch the sky. Yeah, watch the sky. Talk about something other than what you see every day. And that's when we talk, go back to what I said before about the mainstream feature. That's what's happening in every household. Whereas before, before COVID, it happened only in the households that were already converted converted to the RV lifestyle that already had RVs. Now, how many times do you talk to friends or business associates that they used to say, I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to, I'm going to get an RV one day. Now they call you up and say, you'll never guess what I did today. And I say, yes, I did. You probably bought an RV. Yeah. How'd you know? Exactly. Because of so much activity. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So we want to thank our friends at Woodall's Campground Magazine and RV business for providing all the news of the day and invite you to join us right here as we continue with the Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. 
Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. All right, welcome back everybody to the Camper Report Show and back for another visit to the Camper Report Show is Janine mm -hmm. Pettit, the, uh, what we call you, the girl camper in chief? Camper in chief. Camper <laughs> in chief of girl camper. That's uh, what, that's what headquarters, that's what they all call me at headquarters. Our camper in chief wants to talk to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's been a while, and every time that we get a chance to talk to you, Janine, you've added another one or two or three elements to the, the Girl Camper community. So why don't you give us a little flavor of what's new with Girl Camper, especially for those people who may be watching the show that still haven't found Girl Camper. Well, Bob, thanks for having me on again, because it's always great to chat with you. You're just one of my favorite people in this whole industry, and it's great um, being on the show all the time. Uh, you know, Girl Camper, every time I start something new with Girl Camper and I, I finish it, and it takes a while to get the machine running, and I think, that's it, I'm done. But then other things come up, and I find myself having to do them, and that's what we're doing now. We We just started year three of the magazine. Um, our summer 2022 issue marked the third year of um, the magazine, and it took that long to get it off the ground. So that made me feel like I was free to make this commitment I just made to go RVing and to Camp Code to produce videos for them. So we're hard at work this summer producing DIY and lifestyle videos for Go RVing and technical videos for Camp Co. Although I hate to say technical because Camp Co makes everything so much fun. I just came home from Greensboro, North Carolina, where we did a series of videos on, you know, leveling your camper and all the things we do step by step. So, you know, we continue teaching people about this lifestyle we love. That's fantastic. Um... In terms of the magazine, it's, you know, you came out the gate and you you won awards with the magazine with your very first issue. I mean, this looks like a magazine that's been out there for 20 or 30 years, but it's it's always uh, fresh. What, what do people find when they open up the pages of Girl Camper? What do they find? Well, they find everything we love. So we started right from the beginning saying, this is not going to be an RV magazine. It's not going to be a tent camping magazine. This is going to be about the lifestyle that we love, which is road trips, which is um, RVing, which sometimes is tent camping, which is travel, which is food destinations so and a lot of like technical support we have our friend mark polk every issue of the magazine talk about things that you should be doing to your rv your tow vehicle or maybe just your road trip vehicle um we have an article every feature on traveling with a pet on health and wellness on places to eat on places to camp and just just this lifestyle that we love so we we set out purposely to make a magazine that was very broad. That, you know, let's let's take a step back in time because it's such a, a well-oiled machine. It's running so <laughs> smoothly because you jumped into this with both feet. But you 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 get off the ground in 2015 with your pod, 2015 with your podcast. Yeah. Tell us, tell us, give us a chronological from 2015 to where you are today. Well, I was just sort of writing blogs and Go RVing was publishing my blogs and I'm forever grateful to them. They wanted to show the world that there is a, a solo woman travel, you know, population out there. So I, I was happy doing that. And then someone approached me and said, would you like to do a podcast? And I thought, you know what? I would like to do that. So in 2015, I started that podcast. And for two years, I did that podcast well, really more than that, almost three years. But in 2019, I really had to make a decision about Girl Camper. It was taking up more and more of my time. It felt like it was no longer a hobby. So I had to make a decision myself. And I had to sit down with my husband and say, am I going all in on this? Or 
do I pull back and still have some semblance of a normal life? <laughs> is this a job or is this a hobby? And I said, this is a job. And, you know, I, I, I literally worked 50 hours a week at Girl Camper. But, but as you know, uh, when you do something that you enjoy so much, it's not mm -hmm. work. I mean, you, this is fun. You, you, you live it, it you is. love it. And, and it's spread out so much. Um, you were just telling me about the, the girl camper guides. Tell, tell us about what is a girl camper and how many you have right now, because I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Well, we have 257,000 members on our Facebook group. We have tens of thousands of members that have joined our, uh, we have a little private um, Girl Camper community. So when you go on girlcamper.com, you can click up there and see our Girl Camper guide. So I think it's been two and a half years, almost three years since we said, Janine can't do it all. You know, like I need people representing Girl Camper out across the country. We thought if you're going to South Dakota, right, we need a Girl Camper guide up there. It's going to write and tell you where to go, what to see there. So that's what we did. We created Girl Camper guides. And now by the end of June, we are going to have 40 Girl Camper guides across the country. And they create events in their neck of the woods. So you can go on to girlcamper.com. You have to pay a $10 fee one time because we have to make sure you are who you say you are before we can let you on the back end where all the details about those trips are. You can see a little bit of it. But just like if you joined Uber, you have to submit your driver's license and we have to match you, make sure you say who you are. So We've got tens of thousands of members there and we're so thrilled, Bob, because COVID is passing, thanks be to God, and people are getting out on the road again and those trips are all filling up and everyone is having fun again. That, that's amazing. Um, so you've been traveling a lot and you just came back from North Carolina to do some videos for CampGo and now you're gonna do videos for Go RVing. What's gonna be the difference between what you do for CampGo and what you do for Go RVing? Well, it, it, I think it's kind of uh, synopsizes what Girl Camper is all about. So for CampGo, we do some technical stuff. It's some how to So I bought an RV, now what, right? How, do, how am I getting the sewer emptied? How am I getting fresh water coming in? How am I making sure my electrical is protected? So I have been working with Campo. They have been a sponsor of Girl Camper since 2015 when I started the podcast. And you want to talk about well-oiled machines. I got down there. It was so much fun because it's the gang. You know, we've been working together so long. And we just made a lot of videos on those technical things that newbies need to know. And even people who have been there a while, there's new products. They Campo is always upping their game. So with Campo, the work I do is a little more technical, but still a ton of fun. With Go RVing, you know, they promote this lifestyle. Like we love our RVs, right? And there's people out there who are telling us all those things on YouTube. But what my job is, is the fun stuff. It's the glamping. It's the girl camper stuff. It's how to light up your campsite, how to wallpaper the interior of your RV. How do you hang curtains in your RV without poking a hole in the wall and possibly hitting a wire, right? So over the years, I have figured all these things out, recovering your RV cushions. So I'm going to be sharing those DIYs with the Go RVing audience. That, that again, is such a service. And, and, and before we go, we got a couple of minutes left here. Explain the, the foundation of Girl Camper in who is a girl camper? Because some people, you, you mentioned solo earlier before, and they might think, well, that's for widows or for single women. Yeah. So, so talk about the base foundation, because this is for all women. Yeah. It's any woman who wants to be out there and get going. And I don't want to knock you guys, Bob, because we love you. But, <laughs> you know, when you're a woman, whether you're married with children or you're an aunt or you're a single woman, women are wired to be caretakers. You're always serving your family, your community, your church, whatever, right? And at a certain point, um, those people's needs have been served. Your kids have flown the nest. The whole time we're doing that as women, 
The husbands are still golfing. They're still fishing. They've got hobbies, right? Then you wake up one day and you go, I want to do some fun stuff. So we I decide. Want more, I want more of me time, right? I want, yeah, just have some fun now. So Girl Camper is for anyone who wants to get out there and go places. And honestly, I would say like 70% of our audience is married. Yeah, so it's it's not for, but but here's the thing. They may be married, but when they're out on a, a girl camper trip, they're solo. They're with their girlfriends. The husbands don't do not come along. And so we call it girl camper because I discovered very early on, when you take off all those hats you wear as a woman and you get out to the campground with your girlfriends and you're roasting marshmallows on the campfire, you suddenly feel like you're 12 again. <laughs> so we call it girl camper because we get to turn into girls again. Well, that, you know, and that's the fun of it is being, like you say, being outdoors, being with people that you love sharing the same ideas and goals and just having a damn good time while yeah. you're doing it. And nature is so healing, Bob, and life is stressful. So, you know, you get out there and even if you only have Friday and Saturday night, oh my gosh, that 48 hours just fills you up and gives you everything you need to face that week ahead of you. You're right. It doesn't take long to get the train back on the track. You're right. Right, 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 right. Yeah. All right. Our guest this morning is has been Janine Pettit, a girl camper and camper in chief. Camper in chief. <laughs> and we're going to put a lot of links down below and some graphics in post processing to show you the value of girl camper. So if you're a woman out there and you have not heard of girl camper, you, you want to check out the website, the Facebook page, the the how-to videos that Janine's been out there and she's she's an industry legend and all the <laughs> women all, all the women can learn something from her so any any last words for our fans at all Janine just hey don't be afraid this is the one thing I message I always want to communicate with girl camper and that is you know, it's not inherently dangerous. There's a bunch of people who have your back. It will help you get started. And if you're afraid, you don't need to tow a camper. Just come, rent a cabin, hang in a hammock, throw a bedroll in the back of your SUV. Just get out there. Get started. All right. Janine, thanks very much for joining us. I know you get a busy schedule. <laughs> always, Bob, but it's always great to see you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Jesse from Outsiders Calling, and I love adventurous family travel with my wife, Jenny, and our son, Tucker. For over three years, we've RV'd across the U.S. and Mexico, and it's tough to find places that meet all our needs. Now, we plan our trips with the RV Trip Wizard, pull it up in the RV Life app, select it, and go. It helps us discover amazing new places to grow together as a family. RV Trip Wizard with the RV Life app is an awesome trip planning combination. You can get both for one low annual price. Check out rvlife.com to learn more. Hey everybody, we are in Brimfield, Massachusetts. We're talking with the Sherman family and they have been combining RVing and flea market antique and collectibles for how many years, you guys? We've been coming to Brimfield for 41 years. 41 years. And all three shows for 41 years. Okay. And I asked your lovely wife earlier why she enjoys the RV lifestyle, and she said... Having our own bathroom, sleeping in our own bed, and cooking our own food. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm going to take the mic off you and just hold it between. So when you talk, you hold the mic. And, when, and if you get to talk... If you get to talk, do you agree with her? No, she said what? Own bathroom, own food, and own bed. Uh, is she right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, when we started this business 40-some uh, years ago, uh, we decided that we wanted to own bathroom in Portland and not to go to these uh, so-called porta parties Porta parties <laughs> right. Uh, they can get pretty raunchy in the summer, well, huh? There's no outhouse in Maine that's in bad to see so. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And you're in Massachusetts now. You've been coming here for 40 years, but you're from the great state of Maine. 
And you said you've owned several different types of RVs during your during your flea marketing career. Well, no, I mean, I've owned uh, many different uh, RVs since I was 20 years old. I think I had my first one when I was 21 years old. Hmm. A homemade pickup truck. Oh, yeah. you made yeah, yourself. Yeah. Were you with him then? No. No, you before you knew That's him. That's before my no, time. No, I, I didn't make it myself. I uh, I bought it. Oh, Which okay. The guy had made it, and I bought it, and that got me on my way. <laughs> okay. So, um, do you ever RV? Well, let me ask you this. Are you flea marketing every week between April and October, or uh, do you ever just take the RV out um, for a casual weekend with just you and your wife, who's having her birthday today? Well, <laughs> no, we, we try to take off and just not as much now as we did back when she was teaching. Uh, we used to take weekends and, you know, it, it would always pertain to the antique business. We'd go out and, uh, and buy and we'd go, we'd go camping until we run out of room in the camper because we bought too much you stuff. You bought too much stuff. Oh, okay, that's when you were out as a buyer. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, we, we did, uh, we, we do some, we used to do a lot of camping. And, yeah weekends and but are you seeing more and more RVers on the on the circuit that travel with you to go from show to show uh, mm -hmm. not, not I don't a know. lot more I don't no. think it, there's a lot of them a lot of uh, dealers uh, antique dealers that have them and do yeah. it the uh, same way as we do yeah. uh, many different rigs and yeah. we've had many different rigs uh, for as campers Okay, so let's change their hat here for just a second. Um, a person comes up to you in your booth here, in your tent, okay? Um, how can they be friends with you to get the best price? What, what, what do they need to say to you? Or let me ask you this, what are the things not to say <laughs> to the vendor to get a good price? Uh, don't, don't just lowball you come out and say, uh, you know, if you got a hundred dollars on that, uh, would you take 25? Or 50. And don't, whatever you say, don't say, I'll give you. I'll give you. Know, that. Is that demeaning? It, it, I think so. <laughs> yeah. It gets my dander up anyway. Okay. And you'll just refuse. You'll, you don't have to sell everything, right? I just sometimes give them a dirty look and walk off. But. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> So um, in this particular event that we're here right now is one of the biggest in the country, right, Glennis? I believe it is. And, yeah, um, I really think it is. Um, just Yeah, okay, like your teacher now. You're being a teacher again. So hold the mic up to your mouth here. I'm going to ask you this question. Oh. Um, what are you seeing as far as demographics um, at these events? Are they getting younger? Are they old people? Are they city people? Or What, what, what do you find? I, there's still a wide range. We've been here so long. We have our steady customers that are our age ah, and okay. look for the old things. But the younger crowd, they're into more updated type things and repurposing. They, they're not really into antiques. It, to them, an antique is in the 50s because that's what Grammy had. Yeah. So to them, that seems old. But to us the 50s we were growing up ourselves then and it is doesn't seem old so I guess it's different your age different audiences yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like there's a Chinese checker game right there okay yes, right yeah, right uh, probably a young kid today doesn't even know what a Chinese checker game is because it's not electronic that's true that's true but I played with that one like that when I was yeah because you always lose one marble you always lose one of the marbles that's supposed to be your color, right? Right. Okay. And Mr. Sherman, many people have said long ago that I've lost all my marbles <laughs> long ago. Yeah. You yeah, do. I guess so. so if I ever had any. Yeah. <laughs> what, what would you say to RVers that want to, like, follow the circuit? They want to go to a different place every day, a, a different show every weekend. Are there places online that they can can go somewhere and, you know, pick out all these treasures? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. There's... Uh, there's a lot of trade magazines in the business. You pick them up out here, and and it it lists all the different shows in different states, and it there's quite a lot of information out. And I, I guess you can go online too, and go online and punch in the state that you're interested in, and usually you can buy. But the, there aren't a lot of shows like there used to be. So if you get one good one a month, 
That's about what the average yeah. is now. Great. It used to be you could go almost every week or every other week, but now maybe once a month to get a good show. Okay. Mm. Hey, we want to thank you so much for joining us here and wish you the best in your selling ventures and your traveling ventures and your RVing ventures as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.